Talking with the Experts. Hello and welcome to Talking with the Experts. My name is Rose Davidson and I'm from rosedavidson.com and today my guest is Will Lawrenson and Will is a customer conversion specialist, host of the uh, Customers Who Convert podcast, reviver of e-commerce conversion rates and almost undebated champion of Mario Kart. Welcome Will, how are you? Hi, thanks for having me. Yeah, I'm good, thanks. How are you? I'm very well. Um, so but this is take two of our little soiree. <laughs> and I'm sorry to get you out of bed so early in the morning. Time, time conversion um, you know, is not kind when you're doing this, this sort of um, discussions, you know, from such a long way away. So, yeah, so oh, that's all right. <laughs> so um, you're from the UK. Your business is uh, called Money, uh, Monkey Blocks. And your topic is customer experience optimization. So um, based on what you've told me, you help companies make the most out of traffic and customers they already have. And once someone clicks on an advert or search link, you help them make sure that site visitors find what they are looking for and complete the action they came to do, whether that's create an account, make a purchase, edit account details, or speak to customer service. So that's really great. So tell me a little bit more about Monkey Blocks. Yes. Yeah, so um, I suppose a, a bit of background first. Um, my experience is, uh, is in startups mainly. Um, I worked, worked for a few in, my, in the early days of my career. Um, I had one of my own as well. And while my, my roles were always marketing and, and quite, quite broad marketing roles covering uh, all, all acquisition channels, retention and everything. Um, I always found there were issues with the products um, we had. You know, it was, and, and the responses from management and, and the product teams always tended to be, uh, you know, just optimize your advertising, get, get better people in. Um, and, they, and they, you know, they, they kind of tried to hold off um, and uh, yeah, hold off on, on development and things when, when we were saying, look, you know, this is the feedback we're getting. Um, we, can, we can look at the usage stats. We see people aren't using this feature. They don't like that feature. They're not finding that feature. Um, so, you know, we, we can do all the best marketing in the world, but if the product isn't right, um, you know, we're, we're always going to struggle. We're going to struggle to convert people. You know, at one of the startups, it was a, a subscription product. So we said, you know, we're going to struggle to get them to go from a trial to a paid subscriber, and then we're going to struggle to, to retain them as a paid subscriber um, if, if they keep having these problems. So that's kind of something that stuck with me through a few roles. Um, you know, I was, I was always that marketing person, but getting really close to the product team and saying, you know, these are the things we need to be doing differently. This is how people, this is how people actually want to use it. Um, so yeah, what I was finding was that you know, the product teams just, they built what they wanted to build. Um, they, they built the product that they thought oh, would, be, yeah. would be correct. Um, yeah. And so I, I always kind of pushed my way in and said, no, we've got to look at the data, you know, look, look at how people are using it, um, look at the use cases. So I, I worked for uh, Europe Car at one point um, for one of their kind of uh, car club startups. And I was saying, look, we've got to look at the actual usage data of how they use the cars and how they book the cars. If, if no one is booking a car for one hour, let's not have that as a default option. Let's have the average booking as the default option um, and things like that. Anyway, so uh, my last role was head of conversion at a, a large gaming company in the UK. Um, and then I left my job last year in November um, to, to basically go out on my own. Um, and, and work directly with just a handful of clients at a time to yeah, work on customer experience optimization. So part of that's conversion rate optimization. So when you drive traffic to the website, how do we make sure they take the correct action? And, and mainly f when, when we talk about conversion rate optimization, we're, we're normally talking the purchase, really. Yeah. So if you've got a, a fashion site and you're driving traffic to it with ads, how do we make sure that they select the size of the item they want, click add to basket, and then complete the checkout. 
And then I, I take it a little bit further. I look at the full customer experience really and say, well, you know, it's, it's great getting people to make that conversion, but we've got to keep them happy as well. We've got to make sure they can find the returns information they need. They can contact support and support can give them the, the support they need. Yeah. Um, if they need to log in and check their order, they can do that. If they want to log in and edit their marketing preferences, they can do that as well. Because all these little touch points create positive and negative emotions for people. And so you want to be creating as many positive mm. emotions as you can. Um, and a lot of brands will try and do that in, in some areas, you know, next day delivery um, and having live chat, for example, but they miss out on things like uh, being able to check a, an order status w within your account or, or being able to easily unsubscribe from an email, you know, things like that. So if someone could love your brand, but if you make it difficult for them to unsubscribe from emails, because they don't think they need them because they, they know what they want to buy from you. That's going to create a negative experience, which might result them going to a competitor instead. Mm, yeah. I found that so, with some yeah. websites like emails, there is no unsubscribe thing. And in Australia, it's mandatory to have an unsubscribe link. Um, it doesn't matter where you come from. If you come from, you know, China somewhere or, you're still supposed to supply an unsubscribe link. It, it's, it's mandatory around the world now, pretty much. Um, I can't remember if this was a GDPR thing, but um, it's pretty much supposed to be one click uh, yeah. in, in some jurisdictions. And now you can get around that a little bit. You don't have to unsubscribe. Well, hang on. In my opinion, <laughs> Mm. You don't have to unsubscribe someone from all your marketing emails just because they click the link. Yeah. You can get them to uh, opt out of certain, you know, you, you can, you can offer them options. Yeah. I've, you I've, can say, yeah. do, do you want to pause your emails? Do you want to opt out of uh, new product announcements, but stay opted into promotions and, and giveaways and things? Yeah but you need to make it as easy as possible. And if you start putting it behind logins, it's, you know, people just get fed up. People yeah. don't want to log in. Yeah, it, I know I do. You know, there are times when, you know, I, I do it as well. Uh, I'll have, you know, I'll get newsletters every week from a company. I'll ignore them for months and months and months, possibly years. And eventually I'll go, oh, do you know what? I need to unsubscribe from this. And then I can't, then I can't remember my login. Because yeah. I, haven't, I haven't logged in for two years. And if you make it difficult for me to, you know, reset, I, I don't want to reset my password because I don't want to access my account. I just want to unsubscribe. So if you make it difficult, people hit the spam button um, and then people don't go back to your business. You know, there must be a reason they signed up in the first place. Yeah, okay. So, yeah. So, yeah, that's um, the majority of what I do is, is the on-site experience, making it as best as possible for people um and then kind of tied to that i do a bit of email marketing you know abandoned cart emails um making sure that brands are getting the most value out of transactional emails as well so if you're sending an order confirmation what can we add to that order confirmation email to make sure there is potentially an action that that customer could take you know the, the what they want is a list of the products they've bought which is great give that to them can we then add a button which says, by the way, you might like this product, click here to add it to your order. Mm. Yeah. People don't have to click it, but there's no real reason not to have that. Well, no, there's, test an option. It, but... yeah, there's an option there. Yeah. So yeah. And it, and you know, for some brands it, it can work really well and really naturally. You know, if you sell, uh, I don't know, arts and crafts supplies or something and people have certain products in their, in their order, but there are other products that are very, very closely linked. I don't know. The, it's not arts and crafts exactly, but the one that always comes to mind is a printer. Yeah. If someone orders a printer, you know, and doesn't buy paper and ink, you know, at every opportunity, try and get them to buy that paper and ink, you know, whether it's on the, uh, in the basket, say do you want to add these to your order before you continue on the order confirmation page your order has gone through but do, are you sure you don't need these products 
And then in the email confirmation, just say, look, you just letting you know you have until 5 PM mm. to add these to your cart. If you do need them, mm. um, you know, it, it doesn't have to be pushy. And if you do it in the right way, it just, you know, though, if they're very linked products, it makes sense. If you just started chucking some different clothing yeah. options in there, it might not work so well, but right. yeah, there, I mean, there are, there are loads of options and, um, a lot of the time it comes down to a kind of usability, anxiety, and motivation. Um, so usability tends to be things on, on the website, like uh, adding new payment options or adding um, like buy now, pay later yeah. as an option or adding a sticky call to action so that if they scroll up and down the page, that call to action is there. Anxiety covers things like uh, trust, do people trust your brand? Um, so things like um, security badges on the website, making sure you've got your SSL certificate uh, and reviews, loads and loads of reviews. Um, and then motivation comes down to things like, um, it could be the copy and kind of digging into people's emotions and making them realize they do really, really want that product. Um, or it could be things like um, make, making people aware that there's only one of these products left. Or, you know, you can be a bit sneakier with it and say, and, and have one of those pop-ups that says, or notifications which says, you know, seven other people are looking at this product and there's one left. Or, you know, there's only one ticket left at this price, that sort of thing. So motivation might not be the, quite the right word because it's, it's, it focuses on things like scarcity and urgency. Yeah. Um, so I guess you are motivating them. <laughs> To make that purchase. Are. Yes. Yeah. Um, I mean, yeah. Scarcity is the motivator, isn't it? You know, yeah. it's some um, yellow. <laughs> yeah. And it's and it's things like that. You know, you, you can you can drop these things throughout the experience. Or FOMO, uh, you know, so I the, should say, not YOLO. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> um, so you know, the, for example, the, the printer example earlier, that would be kind of a, a usability a bit of a usability thing because yeah. if they have the printer, but no ink and paper, they can't use it. Um, and there'd be a bit of, I guess, anxiety and motivation really. You know, it's kind of digs into all three things saying, you know, you need all three of these things to work together. So yeah. make sure you don't miss out. But yeah, um, those, those three things are the key things to, to look into. Um, and, and three of the things I focus on through, data anal analytics, uh, heat maps, customer feedback. Um, and of course, just running through a website myself at times and just picking out all the areas where I think there could be a potential change or an issue and then going and researching whether I think that's actually an issue. Yeah. So um, uh, without, um, I guess, asking you to pick favourites, I mean, I don't know if you even have these companies in the UK, but Spotify and WooCommerce which are um, shopping sites, I guess, you know, websites. Um, so what do you, what kind of uh, commercial e-commerce e sites do you use in the UK? Um, yes, I think Shopify, WooCommerce and Magento are, are probably the biggest. Um, yeah, there's probably a couple of the smaller ones out there, but uh, yeah, those are definitely the biggest. Shopify's definitely, uh, definitely kind of exploded over the last year or two. I'd mm. say. I know, you know, it was obviously always there, getting bigger and bigger, and bigger the last few years. But yeah, it just feels like the last year or so, or two, they've made some massive changes, which um, which are fantastic. Um, the, the the downside to it, it, it depends on the size of your business, really. Yeah. Um, if you're there, there are businesses doing millions and millions through it and they're happy with that. Um, some businesses like to build their own things. Yeah. So one of the benefits of Shopify is all the apps. You can basically just plug in an app to do whatever you want to do on the website. And very quickly, you can add in a lot of these customer experience bits. Um, but each of the apps costs you money. Um, and you have to get them right still. You have to implement right. You have to get the right messaging on them, um, which takes a bit of time and learning. Mm. Um, but some businesses, you know, if, if you want a bit more flexibility with those tools, you have to build them yourself. Um, 
So there are, there are pros and cons, but if you're a small business, maybe a handful of employees and, and a founder, um, even if you're doing a few million a month, you, you can happily sit on Spotify because those apps aren't, they're not really costing you that much compared to what you're getting from them. Um, yeah, I, I'd probably go, go with Shopify. Um, there's lots you can do with Magento, but you need developer support a bit more. Um, I have a WooCommerce site. I find that for me, it's easy to use. Um, and I use that with a Divi. Um, that's my theme that I, that I use. So they leap together basically. So yeah, I can make them, I can make them work together. So yeah, that's, but that's yeah, amazing. And, and, and sometimes you don't, you don't have to use the full platform. Um, there are plenty of sites out there, which pretty much just use the Shopify checkout mm. because the Shopify checkout is pretty decent. Um, but again, there's, there's a few issues if you want customization. Um, I think on the free, well, not the free plan, the, the, not the pro, pro plan or plus plan, I can't remember what yeah. it's called. Um, you can't remove like the promo code field. Right. And so if you don't use promo codes, then that, that field is always there. Yeah, yeah. And it means people go look for them. Yeah. So, you know, there, there's flexibility on things like that. You know, I, um, I actually posted on LinkedIn last week, I think it was, yeah, about auto, auto filling promo codes for people. Um, so basically never have pretty much never having that field there to actually allow people to put a promo code in and instead just saying, we give promo codes out through emails. And so if they click that email or would we, you can link it to the account. So if that person, uh, goes to make a purchase, just activate the discount in the background. Um, you'll have acquisition through, uh, ads, which again, you can pass it through a link or affiliates, which you'd give them their own code. And again, that can be passed through links. Um, and if you have an offer that's widely available, you know, publicly available, it, it, it just, just apply it. You know, it's, I mean, obviously test these things out, but you know, you, you can just apply it. And all those people who would say, Oh, I know that offers on, but I didn't see the promo code or there's the box. Like how do I go and get it? And, you know, you don't want people to get distracted. No. Um, but I'm, I, you know, I'm a big advocate of holding off discounts as much as possible. You know, you, unless you built your brand on that, you know, if you're like a pound saver or dollar saver sort of yeah. website, you, you are, you're a discount site. But if you, if you really want to build a brand, you shouldn't need to be giving discounts out too much. No, except for Black Friday sales. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> so, um, tell me a little bit about your podcast, Will. Oh, yeah. So, I host the uh, Customers Who Click podcast. Uh, it's a weekly podcast where I interview um, a different marketer uh, each, yeah, each week um, on various, various topics. It's, it's always their specialty topic. Um, sometimes it gets a bit niche. Um, I think I've had one yeah, kind of one podcast, which was about Facebook ads generally. Yeah. Um, but a, a lot of the rest have been a little bit more specific. So we've had AI for, you know, artificial intelligence for yeah. copywriting. We've had gamification. We've had how to use personalized video in, in uh, your customer emails. Um, what have we had recently? Copywriting. Um, sorry. Um, what else have we had? Oh, video advertising recently. Okay. And a really good one about how to, how you can kind of create video um, in a way which is reusable and, and basically gives you a, a toolkit of video creative that you could continue to use for years. And, and you know, it's just evergreen content, really. It's, it's not yeah. campaign focused. Um, so you just get the, the best value for your money by yeah. focusing on your core messaging and being able to say, well, oh, we, we want to use this intro, that these two benefits and this outro for yeah. a YouTube ad. But on this Facebook advertisement, we're going to use this bit, this bit, this bit. Um, so it was a really great episode. And it was uh, with a guy who had spent 23 years at Procter & Gamble. Okay. And then he, yeah, he, uh, 
he he went off and did some investing in startups and things um and then he launched basically launched a brand purely through youtube advertising um it was called the i think it's the aura brush it's like a i think it's a brush for your tongue Um, (laughs) and and yeah they did amazingly well they're a case study because they're the first brand to just purely launch through through google advertising and this was back in about 2009 nine ten, i think when when the advertising on YouTube was pretty new. So I mean, yeah, people are experts on there. Um, it's really, really good. So you can, you can find it at customerswhoclick.com or, or look up customers who click on iTunes, Spotify, or whatever other platform you use. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, I just started my, um, I've got my podcast on three different channels. Plus now just put it on Podbean. So yeah, it was pretty exciting. Okay. Hmm. Yeah. I've got my own website on there now. <laughs> so, um, okay, so you've really covered everything about getting um, you know, conversion traffic and you know how to get the customer experience to be positive because a lot of businesses don't, they don't look at all the ins and outs of making the customer experience so positive they they do forget to they forget some of the steps along the way i think um i think a a lot of a lot of brands are guilty of just you know getting their website live being happy with it it works there's no bugs or whatever so now we just drive traffic we're just going to get more and more traffic to it um you know the, the website makes sales so the problem is driving traffic to it and actually you know, there's so much more that we've done on the website, uh, both for conversion and and for retention yeah. as well. So it's it's really important to keep looking at your website. Yeah, yeah. I just, we talked about, you know, emails, how there's no unsubscribe thing or you've got to jump through hoops to unsubscribe through, you know, just to get, get out of them. And I think, oh, you know, why bother really? It's just, yeah, it, it's not a good, customer experience i mean i might like the company i just don't want the, the emails all the time so you know i would go probably yeah, exactly. and buy from them but they've they've lost my business because the email thing was just too hard to get out of yeah so do you have any wise words in passing will to businesses that may be in startup or even if they're not in startup and you know, what they could do to do things a little bit better with their site conversion or customer conversion or? Um, I'd say work out, work out your brand values and really, really, really push them. Uh, make, make sure they're obvious, obvious to people and, and that will allow you to differentiate yourself. Um, and that alone can have an impact on conversion rates and the experience. You know, the, a great example um, that was, yeah, is, is quite prominent at the moment is kind of sustainability, mm. um, particularly around clothing. And you'll see some brands will basically stick a badge on their product pages and say, you know, this product uses X amount less water than previously or, or other jeans or whatever. Um, but it's clear that they literally just, they're sticking a tag on it and saying, it it becomes a product feature basically um whereas other brands will say you know you'll go to their website and it's so clear that that brand really cares about sustainability and the environment um you know they might they probably have some sort of scheme to donate part of their profits um they will talk about how they source their partners uh, specifically to you know to avoid problems and, and to be to be better and more sustainable and it's so obvious when that happens um you know you you go to the majority of fashion sites i think i think fashion's particularly bad for this um most fashion retailers their websites are so similar similar layouts similar products and no there's no real feel for a brand there Mm. they'll have a logo they'll have their own design style and things but they're all just so similar so I think if you, if you want to stand out, give yourself a bit of at an advantage, make sure you've got those brand values right. Um, and make sure you actually, you know, you, you put them on the site, make sure people are aware, make sure they're in your you know, social media, your emails. And I'm, I'm not saying make it the primary message everywhere, 
but just make sure that messaging is evident and it and people believe that it's something you care about and not just something you're sticking on a banner on the website yeah it's just um i guess it's being authentic really isn't it it's just you know putting what it, what you believe in and you know being truthful to people without you know without bending the truth i guess hmm. yeah but where can they find you will um either monkeyblocks.com so mm -hmm. it's just uh, monkey the animal and blocks b l o c k s yep um i like to think that's quite obvious but i get a lot of people thinking it's b l o x okay. for some reason <laughs> i don't know if that's just they just assume i've gone with a some sort of modern approach to it um yeah monkeyblocks.com uh, email is will at monkeyblocks.com or just find Will Lawrenson on LinkedIn. I've got quite a bright blue background around my head on my profile picture. So yeah, I know. hopefully I'm easy to find. Pretty, pretty. <laughs> yeah. All right, Will, thank you so much. I'm sorry to make it get up so early in the morning. That's absolutely fine. It's, it's what, half nine now. So, All right. so All right. Well, you enjoy the a, rest a, of your day. Yeah, you too. All right. And thanks for thank coming you. on. No problem. Thank you. Thank you for having me. Bye. Cheers.